the old man wrestling fan, Adam Lovell, the wrestling snob, wrestlingdoneright.com. Just finished up the PLE of the PLE, the Paul Levesque era. I'm talking about Clash at the Castle. And for the first time since jumping on board of the WWE bandwagon at WrestleMania 40, I'm not real pleased with what I saw today. Now, relax. I'm not running away from WWE. I still call it Wrestling Done Right. Hell, I'd even call this PLE, Wrestling Done Right, on some level. But allow me to explain, if you will, let's run down this card. First match kicked off with a shocker. They started this show with the I Quit match for the WWE Undisputed Championship AJ Styles challenged Cody Rhodes. Now, this match is getting praise all over the internet. I didn't care for it. Relax and let me tell you why. Are both of these guys amazing wrestlers? Yes. Amazing workers? Yes. Some of my favorites? Yes. Are they top-notch pro wrestlers who do it right? Yes, 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 yes. If you will, right? I don't care for these garbage anything goes, no rules, AEW style looking matches. And I don't really mean that as an insult to AEW. These are the kind of matches AEW fans love, cherish, and adore, right? They love these things. And I felt like I was watching a match that was designed to please AEW fans. Now, does that mean I don't think the WWE should ever have a no holds barred match or crazy match? No. But this was only AJ Styles and Cody Rhodes' second match ever. You know, I love the build. I love talking about the build. And then, let me tell you, if there was a pay-per-view that was about the build, it was this one. PLE. Excuse me. But I'm watching them hit each other with weapons, fight in the back. That just, after, on their second match, there was no build to this. It was their second damn match. Yes, AJ fooled Cody Rhodes and did the old Mark Henry swerve. And unretired, didn't retire, beat up Cody and insisted on the match instead. And Cody is the one that made it an I quit match. I get it. But look, if you like this, I'm happy for you. I didn't hate it, but it's just not for me. Watching them just, look, I made another video about this. Maybe you watched it, so I won't belabor this point. I don't understand hardcore no rules matches. Why would you ever wrestle? Why would you ever give a drop kick or an arm drag or or a headbutt. Why? Why wouldn't you get a weapon and continuously use it and use it? Why wouldn't Styles call out Gallows and Anderson instantly and jump Cody? Why? There's no rules. You want the championship? Do whatever the hell you have to do to get it. It makes no psychological sense to me. But it was what it was. AJ wins whenever. I guess the story, the angle of the match was AJ was crazy enough to handcuff or Cody was crazy enough to handcuff AJ to the ropes and beat him with a chair over and over. So when he came at AJ in the corner with the stairs, AJ realized, yo, this guy doesn't mess around. He'll do anything to keep his title. So I quit, I quit, I quit. You already beat me down with a chair. I don't want beat down with the, with the ring step, so no. Okay, whatever. I didn't like it. Again, technically sound and how they performed and how they worked and how they used their weapons and what have you. That's not my style of match. I wouldn't give it a wrestling done wrong, because it wasn't done wrong. It was a wrestling done match. It was a match that was good for what it was, even though I didn't like it. Again, showing you how I'm fair, and my personal bias doesn't come into how I rate matches. It was a WD for me. Wrestling done. Strong, well-worked, good match for what it was, but what it was wasn't for the old man wrestling fan. Just wasn't. Did not like that. Then we had the Women's WWE Tag Team Championship. Oh, this match was a wrestling match. I give it a W. Nothing great, nothing horrible. Wasn't wrestling done wrong, but it just wasn't great. A lot of botched match moves in this. Uh, not just by Jade, who tried to do a springboard something or other and fell on her face. And I'm not making fun of her. I still think Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill are a great tag team. I don't know where this win comes for the Scottish women, the Unholy Union, whose names I can't remember. That's because they've been on TV so little. They've been on TV so little that I can't Isla Dawn. And I, I don't remember their names. I'm sorry, I don't. I haven't seen them enough to remember their names. I didn't watch when they were in NXT. So I don't know them. I know their unholy union name, if that's still what they go by, but they win. Now, granted, Cargill or Bianca Belair wasn't pinned. You know, they had the match won, 
and one of the unholy union chicks came in and shoved uh, Jade Cargill out of the way and got the pin after after uh, fire and brimstone, which is what I like to call Cargill and Belair, uh, hit their finisher, and all of a sudden the Scottish girls win it, the unholy union. Fans go wild. They loved it. Of course they did. That's where they're from. Of course they loved it. Again, I didn't. I, the match, mm, uh, not wrestling done wrong, but just a little above it. It was a, a wrestling, a W. Let's move on. I didn't like it. I'm actually hoping Belair and Cargill win the belts back on Raw. I look, uh, Triple H in the press conference after this show said how one of these unholy union women, I think the, the, the ginger, the red-haired one, lost her mother. Uh, God bless her. That's terrible. I lost my dad five years ago um, in an accident. Horrible. And he said, that before you think that's the reason they won the, the titles, it wasn't. Come on. Come on. It may not have been 100% of the reason, but it played a factor. You know it did. I don't look for them to be long-reigning champions. I could be wrong. Do you guys like them? I don't hate them. They've just never done anything that have, has impressed me or made me remember their damn names. At least I remember Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark's names. But no, we got new champions in the Unholy Union. Uh, didn't care for that either. The third match of the night, Chad Gable challenges Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental Championship. Wrestling done, I guess I would give it. It was good, it was solid, but there was way too much focus on the Alpha Academy. And I know that's part of the story, if you will. That's part of the build that I praise so much. I get it. I get it. But there's so much focus on them that they didn't focus enough for me on the incredible match between two great wrestlers, Sami Zayn and Chad Gable. Yeah, they focused on it, but it, it was more about the drama of what was going on with the Alpha Academy. Chad Gable accidentally hits Maxine Dupree and makes old Otis pick her up and carry her to the back. It's a whole Beauty and the Beast thing they got going on there. I get it. They can build off of that. But it took away from this match. It not only distracted me from the match, it distracted Chad Gable. He's watching what's going on with the Alpha Academy, gets Haluva kicked in the back of the head and loses once again. The man, the athlete, who I'm convinced probably not only going to be an eventual Intercontinental Champion, I think he's going to win the World or WWE Championship eventually. I do. I think he's that damn good. I do. So this continues to build on that story. I don't want to be impatient the way I tell a lot of you to stop being impatient, but man, there's three matches in a row I'm disappointed by. First match, not my style of match at all. Second match, not a good match at all, and winners that baffled me. Those tag team, the women who won the tag titles on Holy Union, the Scottish girls, it took me back, and, and unless you're my age or older, you're not going to remember this, but it took me back to the AWA days whenever Jimmy Garvin and Steve Regal, Mr. Electricity Steve Regal, going way back, not William Regal, defeated the Road Warriors for the AWA World Tag Team Champions. There was no internet back then, but everybody was like, what? Every wrestling fan you heard of, every magazine you picked up, because that's what you had to do back in the day, read some magazines, was like, whoa, what, got, what is this? What's going on here? How did that happen? How does uh, Jimmy Jam Garvin and Mr. Electricity Steve Regal beat the Road Warriors? That's what this felt like. But anyhow, didn't like that. Didn't like this. Gable versus Zane. Good. I give it a wrestling done. It was a good worked match, but the ending sucked, and... I'm just tired of seeing Gable lose, and I'm tired of the Alpha Academy, even though it's part of the build that I preach and praise so much. I get it. I get it. Okay, only two matches left. The next match was for the WWE Women's Championship. Bailey was challenged by Piper Niven with Chelsea Green. This might have been my favorite match on the show. I mean, it was well worked. Piper Niven looked great. Bailey always looks great. She's an incredible champion. She's an incredible wrestler. Piper Niven doesn't give the credit she deserves. And Chelsea Green was awesome here. She gets kicked out of ringside just a couple minutes in. Referee, you know, she pushes the referee and tells him to do his job. He gets annoyed. You're out of here. She's upset. She's screaming. This go the match goes on. Uh, Bailey gets some control, and all of a sudden, <laughs> some mysterious woman runs out with a mask on. You know, I think it was. I think her name was Nacho Chelsea. <laughs> I'm not a comedy fan, guys. I loathe most comedy and wrestling, but this made me literally chuckle out loud. I really did laugh at this when she came running down the ramp with that mask on him. <laughs> I literally laughed. And she's out there, so, you know, he kicked Chelsea Green out. He didn't kick Nacho Chelsea, right? Chelsea Mysterio, if you will. No, he didn't kick whoever this is out. So she got to stay out in there, tried to be 
uh, a factor in the match, tried to interfere. She kind of did, actually. It didn't do any good. Bailey struggles, but defeats Piper Niven in her hometown, in her home country, and retains the championship. And I liked this match. I thought it was good. I liked the comedy spot. It made me think of something Bobby the Brain Heenan would do. I'm not saying he ever did it. But couldn't you see Bobby DeBrain Heenan or Jim Cornette or one of the great managers of the day, not Paul Heyman, it's not really his style, but one of the old school wrestlers being kicked out of the ringside by the ref and coming back with a mask on. I, I could see that back in the day, and that's what Chelsea reminded me of. I really liked that spot, and I enjoyed this match, because there was, other than the slight attempt at interference by Chelsea, this was the most solid match we had all night without too much shenanigans and gaga in it. Because the main event, man, ready to give it a WDR, right? Uh, what do I give um, Bailey versus Piper Niven? I give it a WD. WD, strong work match, WD. Uh, but when I'm ready to give the main event a WDR, who am I talking about? I'm talking about Drew McIntyre, the homeboy who got a gigantic reception, challenging for the world title, right? I mean, it was just, against Damian Priest, it was just great stuff. Two big hosses fighting, you know, bull of the woods, if you will, daddy. Uh, it was great. I loved it. Until the end. There's a big ref bump at the end, of course. You know, some shenanigans going to go on. We pretty much, many people predicted this. I, how could you not? It seemed very obvious. I was kind of hoping it didn't happen. But in comes CM Punk. They don't show his face. There's a substitute ref who slides in when Galloway has Priest covered. One, two, and he just stops. He just stops. And Gall or I said Galloway, right? Of McIntyre. I got so used to him on the indies. But McIntyre looks up, and there's Punk just going like this, just refusing to count the three. I mean, a straight-up heel move. Punk wasn't a heel as far as I know. Both of the men in this match are heels as far as I knew. But this seemed to clearly turn McIntyre. It almost has to. And Punk. I, I, it confuses me a little bit. I didn't like it. I don't like to see my world title matches end like that. Well, and he refused to count two. And in the chaos of it all, Priest recovers. Hit, uh, or no. Punk kicks uh, McIntyre in the balls. Because McIntyre like, starts choking him to death. Like, what are you doing? Costing me my match. And Punk just back kicks him. Donkey kicks him in the balls. Priest recovers. Hits the... Ball from heaven or whatever it's called, choke slam and gets the win. One, two, three, retains. So look, four of these, all five of these matches had a bunch of junk in it. The women's tag team match didn't have any interference necessarily, but a whole lot of or several botched moves, and the wrong team won it in my opinion. I mean, God bless uh, the girl whose mother died. I, I know what that feels like. My, like I said, my dad died when I started the job I'm working now. I got to tell him about it, and, and he heard me, and he said he was happy, but it wasn't long after that, and he wasn't with us anymore. So, look, I feel for anybody who loses a parent, it's terrible, especially tragically like that. But um, they shouldn't have won the tag titles. They just shouldn't have again. Jimmy Garvin and Steve Regal, Mr. Electricity, beating the Road Warriors all over again, you know. But that, that match didn't have any cheating, so I guess you can kind of say that was good uh, in regard to being a straight-up match. And... Bailey and Niven, except for the attempted interference with Chelsea Green, I think she made up for that with that mask. <laughs> so I like that. But the rest of these matches were just full of junk. It felt like AEW to me. Hardcore first two matches were no disqualification. Uh, come on, man. This ain't AEW. That's what it felt like. And then we had the botchy botchy women's tag match. And then we had the decent women's title match with Bailey and Piper Niven, and then we had the complete gaga setting up the story and angle and wanting to, to do the build. I know, I know, I know. But man, what a horrible way to end a world championship match. I don't know. I, I give this show a 6 out of 10. Um, that's low for me. I've been loving everything WWE did. I had to jump on my bike here, my three-wheeler, my trike, my Can-Am Riker, go for a ride, blow some of the steam off. You saw me ride in at the beginning of the video. I just had to, wasn't that angry, but I just had to go for a ride and blow it out of my system. And I did. Um, the little crap they do after the show, the, the, the interviews and stuff, the post-show that they do, it was pretty good. I thought that Wade Barrett was excellent going off about CM Punk interfering and they should be fired and he's a poison. 
Oh, he did great. Wade Barrett. He wasn't in the press conference, but just at the desk. He did a great job. It was awesome and believable. Um, all the people interviewed did pretty good. Damian Priest came in and made every reporter there stand up. All rise. I'm not going to speak until you do. Made everybody stand. That was nice. Punk came in and clear reference to his muffins from his AEW days. He's eating donuts, a box of donuts, offering them to people. As he puts the WWE over, it pats himself on the back a little bit, saying, you know, he's part of the reason that they've reformed and become the company they are. Someone, someone sent him that and told him that, so he said, these aren't my words, but that's pretty much what he was saying. Triple H later agreed with it. So, you know, the post-show was pretty good, pretty solid, short, very short, not as long as some of them have been in the past at all, and not near as many... Um, junky, stupid, wannabe wrestling journalists here. This was a lot of straight-up journalists in this, which I appreciated. But, yeah, disappointing show overall. Glad I got two more days of the weekend left, being that this is a holiday, going golfing with my daughter and her husband tomorrow, you know, so, you know, wrestling isn't everything for me this weekend. But this was a letdown overall. Again, 6 out of 10. What did you guys think of it? I'm sure AEW fans love this show, and I don't mean that as an insult. This really felt like an AEW type of show. A lot of junk and gaga and hardcore crap. I like my wrestling more straight up. This should lead to a good Raw, I would think, I would hope. But, again, overall, disappointed in this show. Not angry, not upset. I think 6 out of 10 is still an okay score and worth watching. But watch it, knowing that you ain't going to see anything special. If you miss this show, what did you miss? Tell me that. Think about it. What did you miss? Uh, the women's tag title change. That's it. There's nothing else you missed that would have been, you know, sad to have missed it. You can, you can keep turning her on Peacock infinitely and watch it whenever you want. But say you could. Say for some reason you had to watch this like the old days or never see it. You wouldn't have missed much. You'd have missed the awesome spot of Nacho Chelsea. You would have missed the women's tag titles changing hands going to the wrong team, in my opinion. And other than that, a five-minute review catch-up would be fine for this, and you wouldn't be out anything. You just wouldn't. Sorry to say that, but I'm the wrestling snob Adam LaBelle, WrestlingDoneRight.com. Check it out. Follow me on all my social media, and I'll be back again real soon before you know it.